Hey, Deserve Listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. By the way, if you ever see anyone impersonating me anywhere on the internet, but you know, I guess particularly on YouTube, let me know by going to the website, hit the contact button, email us there, and we can deal with it. Occasionally there are impersonators trying to sell you stuff. So just keep that in mind. Let's watch. Nice I can't get over how beautiful you. you all are. Actually, Hi, everybody. Do. So, uh, Charlie, when is the last time you and Andre have been in the same room? Therapy. Um, how does it feel to see him again today? I mean, you know, I don't really care. I don't like have one way or the other. It's just like whatever. Okay, so he says the last time he saw him was in therapy. Does that mean they only had the one session? Does that mean that they just had a session yesterday because they've had multiple sessions? I don't know. Probably just that one session, right? Nah, bro. Like you were like pressuring my house. Her. You were pressuring her, like house. yelling at her, fighting with her. No, of course again, I'm gonna fight you because she betrayed like, you oh. and she betrayed it's, me because she came to my house and she said five times, "But I'm gonna put him in a." facility i'm gonna make an intervention and make him straight and i was like do it very interesting so according to andre which i could imagine being true given everything that we've seen that the mom told andre away from the cameras apparently or they edited it out that she was really concerned about charlie's drinking and wanted to encourage him to go into inpatient treatment yeah now, I would recommend that Andre use this as a weapon against Charlie. Uh, I think that they know, Becky and Charlie know subconsciously or consciously how to provoke Andre to become argumentative and I guess people might call toxic and thus easier to scapegoat Andre. So I think Andre's taking the bait in this moment. He was, I didn't show all the clips, but he was actually not responding and not taking the bait earlier, which I didn't think would last and hasn't lasted. Yeah, she but asked you for like his help. Say, you're so adamant to listen to your family. That bull but I'm gonna live my life how I wanna live my life, bro. So off, Nahu, like you can live okay, your life. Bro. Why do you keep like saying Nahu, your sense in all this? Nahu, who cares about your words? Who cares about your words? Because she listens to me. She's my family now, and you're nobody to her. What are you talking about? This is my family, not your family, bro. She's my family right now. Ask okay. Yeah, I don't know if they edited that, but I could imagine Libby having that reaction when Andre's like, you're nobody to her now. I, I don't think that's true for her. I think she's still holding out for the possibility of, I think she's hoping that the scapegoating of Andre will go away and then she can go back to maybe a, a new version of her relationship with her family, maybe a little bit standoffish, not as close, but I think Libby still wants to reconcile if possible. Right now, if she wants to talk to you. Andre, you just told Charlie that Libby doesn't care about him? Of course it doesn't care about him. And this plays right into Charlie and Becky's hand because it looks like Andre has an agenda that he's trying to impose on Libby. And if Libby doesn't stand up for herself in this moment, it'll be evidence that she is his puppet, that he is a master manipulator. So, yeah, he's just absolutely taking the bait. Him. Libby, is that true? You don't care about your brother? I will always, I will always love and care about my brother. That's bottom line. No matter what, you always have that care for your sibling. So, no, baby, that's not true. Okay. And we see her stand up for herself in a very caring, differentiated, fair way. She could have said a lot of different things in that moment, but that was a very diplomatic, very fair way of establishing how she feels while also taking care of Andre. You know, say, sorry, baby, that's not true. And Andre hears that. He's like, okay. <laughs> so is Andre this master manipulator who has gaslit her and is constantly controlling her? No, that's not the way it looks. The way it looks is that Andre is a hothead and you could argue verbally abusive. I mean, he's he can get real intense and is pretty aggressive in his language. And And there was that one time when he grabbed her phone. That's a, that's a physical altercation right there. And I think Libby doesn't appreciate that, but I think she has enough power and safety to be able to push back in a diplomatic way. And I think when he's being that way, she just cuts her losses and says, oh, okay, I'm just, he's worked up. I'm just not going to get into it with him. But I don't think she ultimately changes her behavior to please him. Because I also think that he 
is kind of that classic person who gets very eruptive, but then also can calm down and isn't so rigid that he can't adjust ultimately when he calms down. So uh, it, it could absolutely look like it might be the tip of the iceberg in terms of him abusing her and controlling her and, and her being victimized by him. Uh, he certainly exhibits behavior that would have a lot of those red flags, but I, I think ultimately their relationship is you know, a little bit in that direction, but not as far as it might look, particularly to the family. Stems from the wedding. like. I got roasted at the wedding and went ham, and then they were like, okay, let's label Charlie a drunk, bro. And you are a drunk bum. You don't know me, bro. Huh? Don't call me bro, because I'm not your bro. All right, dude. What did you get on me, bro? Dude, I've never seen you not drunk in a fight. Dude, I yeah, I mean, the, the fact that he's, I haven't shown all the clips, but he, Andre, was claiming that he's, he, he's, he asked Charlie, he's like, when have you ever seen me drink? Uh, maybe he meant, when, when have you ever seen me drunk? And maybe Andre has a different definition of what constitutes drunk, but I, I'm guessing that everyone in that family has been intoxicated. <laughs> I think they all drink, at, at least f from what we've seen. I can't know, but it looks like they're all intoxicated to some extent. There's no crime against that, obviously, it's fine. And to draw this black and white distinction, Andre could easily say in this moment, yes, you're right, I have been intoxicated in the past, but I don't have a problem with alcohol, especially not in the direction. I, maybe I've had a little bit of a problem now and then, but I know that. Now, the whole thing about trying to accuse someone of being an alcoholic is, one, that doesn't do any good because to just yell at someone and say they're an alcoholic isn't usually the way in which you are helping people or making a point. And two, Charlie can easily refute that because Andre doesn't have the data before him or at least a way that he could prove it. So this whole debate as to whether or not Charlie has an alcohol problem, I, I just, Libby knows better than to get into it because it's why, but Andre is just so easily baited by the family. <laughs> That he's just so easily provoked. And so it kind of makes me wonder if off camera, Andre presented a lot more, even bigger moments like this that if we saw, we might side a little bit with the family, but not entirely, I don't know. I cannot Ever. even take you seriously for the that I heard. I cannot take you seriously, seriously. And that's because you're an idiot. Wow. What? Oh, there's that face. Ed gets that face, that face, that, yes, I'm superior, you're an idiot, I, I know everything, you know nothing, you're, a, you're an immature little, little child, and let me explain things to you. Oh my God. I cannot take you seriously, seriously. And that's because you're an idiot. Wow. What? Ah, that face. The face, not his face, but that face. Elizabeth, the rift in this family goes back prior to Andre. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. Families have problems, but we've always like made up, you know, until like he came in the picture. Elizabeth, do you think that there is a future that includes? So that was interesting. Sean asked a good question that the problems in the family predate Andre. And Libby's like, yes, absolutely. There, there was a rift in the family, is what Sean asked, and Libby confirmed. And then Charlie says, every family has problems, but we've, all, but we've always made up. I'm guessing all that is true, that you could see it as a rift, as a major problem. You could see it as, well, you know, just regular problems, and we always make up. Yeah, I, I suspect that the problems in this family even predate the children being born. I'm guessing it goes way back. But parts of the room, I'll see that. That's the same relationship for no, me. I just think, like, you don't really see you're a part of that problem. People are sick of you, bro. We're big, people are sick of me. But it's sick not of about what, what are you talking else about? Like, oh, you're bored. Fight with everybody. Oh my gosh. Who wants to do with trash? this? Nah, we are just trash. Bro, okay. Bro, bro, bro. <laughs> Yeah. Me and Summit have the same reaction to that scenario. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. You got some in your mouth or what? What is it? Bro. Boo, boo. You're never gonna make it in your life. You broke ass. You don't even have a car. Yeah. Andre is, uh, he's, he's got an issue. He has a problem. 
there's really no justification for this kind of talk. They, Charlie and and Becky, when they sat down, they didn't start this this particular fight. Of course, you could argue they they started the whole fight and have perpetuated for years. But in this moment, so it's just unfortunate that he's making himself look like he deserves to be scapegoated, which I think has been happening throughout. He's a very easy scapegoat because he you know, volunteers to step forward and say, it's subconsciously be like, I'll be your scapegoat, and doesn't realize that he's participating in the dynamic. Jeopardize his green card getting renewed again. Like, say, God forbid they see each other and they get into a fight or something and it's reported. That could go against his green card. Good. Hopefully he gets sent back. <laughs> Hopefully well, he gets sent up, back. Pretty, Bicker. What a stupid <laughs> thing to say. It was a joke. Do you yeah, it's possible that it was a joke. It's possible that they edited out the bit where it, it made it clear that it was a joke. But it certainly didn't look that way. I mean, it could be, quote unquote, a joke. But saying something at the same time. Do you not want to see me ever again? Okay. Because I would move to Moldova. Libby, I kind of feel like it's heading that way anyway, to be honest with you. Do you see me He's smiling when I mom. said that? It was a joke. Hey, you might threaten to keep... So that's her entire defense, is that because she was smiling, that, that means it's a joke. I could imagine that she is changing history, that she's trying to claim it was a joke when it wasn't really a joke. I mean, certainly in the midst of the conversation and in the midst of everything that she and a lot of other people have said in, in the family, at the very least, if it was purely a joke, Becky should know. And by the way, she would say, by the way, I'm just joking. I, I, I'm not a fan of Andre, but of course I wouldn't want him to be deported. She didn't say anything like that. So you be the judge. Back, let's up. It was if just you're, a you're gonna joke. You're going to treat somebody's family the way you, you treat people. Like, yeah, there might be a chance somebody might report you. Mother you, you, you're a bastard now? Wow. I mean, I've said it before that it's not a stretch of the imagination to think that a lot of people in that family, particularly Charlie, would call in a fraudulent claim that would potentially put Andre at risk of being deported or pointing out facts that they think would actually get him deported. So Charlie is basically saying that he did that. Is that what he's saying? People like, yeah, there might be a chance somebody might report you. Mother you, you, you're a bastard now. What did you mean by that, Charlie? Because if you're an ass that fights with all, all the family members, like, yeah, somebody might stitch on you. Why would you even say that right now, though? Yeah. God, jeez. Wow. 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 I mean, yeah. I, I didn't... Well, I guess I just didn't think that Charlie would say something like this. But... It certainly fits the search, the the pattern, right? Did you do it? Hell no! Like I don't care. I don't think about him. I really highly doubt that anyone from my family called the office. No, why do you doubt? Okay, so I believe Becky's statement more because she says I highly doubt, meaning that there's a you know a slight chance that someone in the family called and didn't tell me, but I highly doubt if she, if she, if Becky had said. There's no possible way any of us would have called. So, I don't know. The way she phrased that lends itself to credibility. But Charlie still could have done it and might even worry about legal implications if he admits that he did it or violence from Andre or reprisal from Andre. Help that, Becky, since there's such... Because I know venom. my family. My family doesn't do petty shit like that. They really don't. Oh, my God. Like, this is just like... You're, you're delirious too, as I, as I, as I see it. And that's also possible, what Becky is saying, that the family, although has problems, they wouldn't do something like that. And that certainly is possible. But again, is it a stretch to imagine Charlie or Becky calling the authorities, thinking that they were doing some good for Murica and reporting on Andre because they clearly hate him and they clearly want him gone. They clearly want him out of the marriage. So it's not a stretch to imagine that they would say that. I mean, at the very least, you could say that Andre has every reason to suspect them and isn't, in fact, he would be stupid not to suspect them. You have had arguments with and have yeah. had conflicts with Becky, Charlie, 
Jen, mom, dad, which one of them is the most likely to have called immigration? Look at this one right now. He just Charlie? said it right now. He just said it right now. You think Charlie called immigration? Well, if, if, did you say what did you say right now? Yeah. <laughs> I think anyone would be stupid not to at least suspect Charlie, absolutely. Now, the way to figure it out, if Charlie did it, would be to find the anonymous call, and if the guy said bro every other word, then I think you have your answer. Immigration more likely to halt an application and um, put it under investigation if it's from a credible source. And obviously family members would be more credible than an anonymous source. How do you know that they're family members if they're anonymous? Who else would know? I didn't say that it's a family member. We're not privy to that information. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if he, he's either r really dumb and lying or he is trying to come across like he did it when he didn't do it, like he's purposely trying to act like he did it. Either way, that's pretty dumb. Or is it genius because it'll provoke Andre and cause him to be even more combative and more easily scapegoated by the family? I don't know. What do you think? Uh, my opinion is that everything that has ever happened in Andre's life is a possible red flag. Everything is reviewed. Any misinformation or omission can lead to a fraud charge. That can be an enormous obstacle or even make him deportable. She just said everything in your life. So it doesn't necessarily have to be from, you know, our family. What do you Right. I think we know enough about Andre's history that could potentially alarm the government that he was fired from the police force, right? And potential involvement with the mob, right? And the violence with Charlie. I think it's possible that some government officials, even when there's very little information, to justify preventing someone from getting getting a visa will use that information to prevent someone from getting a visa. So whether or not Andre deserves it or not, you could imagine the government uh, taking pause given even the things that we know about. About the infant in general, like what are you talking about? What, are you, what, are, what? what? He, he came over to America before he met Libby, like years before he met my sister and he stayed too long. Stayed too long, there was a couple of days too long. What are you talking about? I'm just saying, maybe that's something else to think of. Yeah, if he was on a, a visiting visa or something and stayed a couple of days too long, I, I, think, I don't know anything about it, obviously, because I, I don't you know, uh, operate in this world. But I think, again, the government will look for a lot of different reasons to look more closely at someone. So, yeah. Now, you would think that that wouldn't matter given the fact that he's in clearly a legitimate marriage and has a child in this country. So the fact that he stayed a few days late on some visa years ago shouldn't, in my book, have any bearing on his, on his status in the United States. And you come for three months during the summertime, change experience, come and go back, that's what it was. How long were you here in the States? Three months. Three, three months, months, two times, 2007, 2008. And, and was it then that you stayed over? Like, I, I Can I just it. object I, I, here, Andre? For purpose of protecting Andre's legal situation, I'm going to instruct my client to not answer that question. Good lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, there's no reason why, Andre, you have to answer that question. Plus, the lawyer's probably thinking, God knows how he's going to answer that question. He's too much of a, you know, uh, an unknown factor when he just starts spouting things. So, yeah, that was good advice. He does attract a lot of negativity in, in Elizabeth's family alone, as you can see. So I do think that it could have been somebody complaining just to kind of wrench in it. Or it could be the other legal issues that, um, that are possibilities. Who, who believes there is a mole in Libby's family? And they're just asking everyone to speculate, of course. I'm guessing that a lot of the cast members will think that there's, quote unquote, a mole in, in the, or a snitch or some bad actor in the family. Now, it'd be different if the family members were reporting facts. It'd be different if they were reporting falsehoods, right? Either way, that's not nice to Libby, but if you're reporting facts, you're just like, hey, I just wanted to alert you about this and this. These are facts. I'm not doctoring the data at all. I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. I, let's just say one's worse than the other one.
Libby, I just want to know if you have just any parting remarks for your sister and your brother. No, I don't really have anything to say. You have nothing to say? A lot, a lot happier now that I've distanced myself from my family. I have a lot more peace. I don't have as much anxiety as I used to. I'm doing yeah. a lot more of my singing. Yeah, I forgot about that whole bit that they were making fun of her singing and, and dismissing her on that. I'm sure that's a smaller factor than the others, but she's saying that she has less anxiety. She feels better about herself, a lot less stress. Yeah, I think that that makes total sense. And uh, it's unfortunate that Libby would have to do that, but yeah, it makes sense, absolutely. And I think there's a chance that if Libby could tell the whole story, she would say, yeah, a lot of it has to do with Andre and my family, but it goes way before that. And and there are a lot of things that I've put up with in my family that I no longer have to put up with now that I'm drawing a boundary. And Andre helped me to draw that boundary, honestly. I think Andre could have done it differently because he gets real you know, aggressive and mouthy at times. But, you know, ultimately, lesser of two evils, I think this is the lesser of two evils that I just distanced myself from them. Because even if they didn't hate Andre, there's all there's there's been toxicity in my family since I was born, and it's just nice not to have to deal with that. It sucks that I can't have the love and relationship with my family that I want to have. That would happen sometimes for sure, but overall, maybe this is for the best. All right, well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.